there's much more that roams these hallowed halls than just eager students and the well-learned staff. From ghostly horses to ghouly late-night visitors, Wittenberg University has a rich history of rather interesting events. And not everything that occurs on these grounds can be rationally explained. After being passed over by several other universities, Springfield was feeling the strain. They wanted a world-class educational institute, but couldn't seem to convince any to stick around. So the town promoters had an idea. If they could sweeten their offer with 17 acres of land north of Buck Creek, maybe an institution would be compelled to stay. The town promoters conveniently admitted the fact that the 17 acres of land was in fact a gravesite. Being adaptable and accommodating people, and despite the fact that the overseeing of the deceased's final resting place was not part of the deal, the founders and the university continued to run the graveyard. As the Civil War unfolded and more space was needed to house the dead, the city of Springfield decided to open a larger cemetery and the process of transporting the deceased from Wittenberg to their new resting place began. Could this be what triggered the history of haunting? We can never be sure, but some swear the souls of the dead roam both sides of the road that was cut through the graveyard, never knowing where their spirits should eternally rest. Many say all of the bodies were carefully reburied at Ferncliff, but stories linger about the poor souls left behind who search for peace even still. I reckon the digging up and reburying of those at rest is enough to arouse the anger of a spirit and condemn it to haunt those responsible for disturbing it. Even though Woodshade Cemetery is no longer a part of Wittenberg, it seems its eerie presence will always be felt. Always near, too, is the unusual sensation that someone or something else might be close. Ask any student who has heard the bone-chilling sound of the slow rumble of a cannonball as it makes its way down the long hallways on the third or fourth floor of Wittenberg Hall, attributed by many to the menacing Union soldier who roams the halls, eternally searching for his lost army and stray horse, or just any enemy to fight. When all is quiet and still, the sound of his cannonball traversing the length of the hallway, finishing with a resounding crash, as well as the clamoring of hooves, has been known to disturb everyone in the building. Terrified, with eyes wide, students clamor out of bed to locate the source, only to realize there is no earthly reason for the eerie noises. No wounded officer, no horse to be found, only the startled faces of their fellow classmates. Stories have also been told of chairs pushed through walls, sounds of fireworks or artillery, even flaming paper balls raining down on passers-by from an open upstairs window. Surely it's only the disorderly students playing pranks. But then how do we account for the horses of Wittenberg? It's true, haunting is not limited to the human race here. Horses have played their own part in the long legacy of spooky sounds and unexplained wonders that Wittenberg holds within its walls. Many students and staff alike here have told of a ghostly horse that appears on the fifth floor of Wittenberg Hall, eternally searching for his wounded officer who passed away after an injury. The story says the officer, on his deathbed, requested for his trusty horse to be escorted to the fifth floor for one final goodbye. The nurses, sympathetic to the hero's wishes, managed to get his steed up five flights of stairs, only to discover that leading a horse downstairs again would be impossible. After the officer passed, the horse was shot, and the laborious task of transporting his corpse down the stairs could at last begin. Officer and horse was to meet again, though, it seems, as stories tell of the pair riding back and forth, forever trapped in the fifth floor hall, tragically united for all eternity. And there have been other tales of horses, dead and alive, making their way through Wittenberg. From pranks involving students riding a horse into Hiller Chapel, and a steward's favorite steed being escorted, feet muffled, through the entire college. Whether true or not, after spending some years at Wittenberg, you'll certainly have your own opinion on whether or not these horse tales, ghostly or otherwise, hold true. And should you be lucky enough to call the rooms of Wittenberg Hall home, take heed about which room you've actually been in. The hall has a long history of happenings that can't always be explained away. In fact, some of the rooms are very special indeed. I'm told that in one of these rooms, one rainy, windy night, a student sat peering at his books, studying late into the night, 
A wind gust blew the window open, and as he scrambled to push it close, he smelled the distinct aroma of tobacco smoke. Turning around quickly, he spotted a most unusual sight. An old man, wrinkled nearly beyond recognition, with a long white beard, wearing a three-cornered hat, a frock coat, and leather trousers. The old man eyed him eerily, puffing his pipe and not speaking. The student, obviously startled, stammered out, Who are you? As he stood, frozen in place, hands shaking, the old man eyed the student a moment longer before slowly removing his pipe and responding, They call me the Flying Dutchman. I was a student here in the 1840s and was expelled in under a month. He puffed on his pipe, seemingly lost in thought for a moment before continuing. I got in a bit of trouble, regaling the student with stories of pranks, often gone wrong, class fights, and his long record of troublemaking that caused his removal from the school. As the room filled with smoke and the student began to feel slightly nauseated, the Dutchman leaned forward suddenly, eyes flashing. Do you know the history of this room? The student felt himself press his back against the wall, suddenly very aware of a bizarre apparition that had appeared from nowhere, now peering at him intensely with a gleam of madness. Uh, no, I don't, he managed to reply. Well, then I must tell you. The first residents of this room were two country boys from neighboring farms who set their sights on Wittenberg after pleading with no luck to their fathers to help support the dreams of something better. The fathers forbade it, insisting that the boys stay to take over the farms but the boys decided to leave and seek their own fortunes. As they left, the words of their fathers rang in their ears, you are no son of mine, and this is no longer your home. The boys made their way to Wittenberg. They were good students, hard working, but as luck would have it, typhoid fever struck them both down. They died here in this very room. And as their fathers had disowned them, they stayed here and stayed. Finally, with nobody claiming the bodies, their fellow students buried the two right over there where the science building now stands. He pointed a bony finger towards the dark window. Their lost and restless souls still wander the grounds, unable to go home, never to find peace. The student now is dizzy from smoke, sick to his stomach, and quite understandably ready to finish this terrifyingly late night visit. As he again steeled his reserve to ask the apparition to leave, the Dutchman stood suddenly and disappeared. The student opened the window to let out the pipe smoke, but was amazed to discover the room was clear and smoke-free. He slumped into a chair, exhausted, and made plans to vacate the room the next morning. It was only after much persuasion that he recalled this tale to his classmates, but he was shocked to hear similar stories from other students about a pale Dutchman who would appear from nowhere and regale the occupant with frightening tales of each room's previous occupants. Whether these tales were true, or just a mischievous spirit trying to rile overworked students remains to be seen. But to this day, the Flying Dutchman remains one of Wittenberg University's most famous and prolific pranksters. It's easy to see how a university with such rich history can be home to stories like this. From ghostly horses to restless souls, it's often said that Wittenberg is a spirited place, both the proud alumni and present students and staff, as well as the lingering spirits from eras long ago. Thank <laughs> you.